This is the DJI Mini 3 Pro and this drone has seriously impressed me as of late. So today I'm going to be walking you guys through my recommended best settings to get professional cinematic footage out of this tiny beast. This is going to be a no nonsense video so I'm literally just going to walk you guys through the settings and why you should be using them. Okay so let's start off with ISO. Now ISO on the DJI Mini 3 Pro is going to be pretty simple. 95% of the time your ISO is going to be set to 100. Now this is going to allow for the least amount of noise possible in your image. So just keep it at 100 if you can. Now the DJI Mini 3 Pro does have a native dual ISO, meaning it has two levels or two bases where the noise is extremely minimal in your image. So those of you that are coming from Sony cameras like the Sony a7S III will be extremely familiar with this. So the dual native ISO value for the DJI Mini 3 Pro or the second level is 800. So your ISO so is always going to be either 100 or 800, never higher or never in between. And you want to use 800 when you're in a low light condition and you don't have enough exposure and you want to increase the brightness of your image without affecting the noise. So your ISO in daytime will be at 100 and at night in some cases you'll have to bump it up to 800. Now let's move on to video resolution and frame rates. Now this is a bit of a controversial topic when it comes to frame rates, so let's start with video resolution. The DJI Mini 3 Pro can shoot in 4K, which is the highest video quality it offers. So pretty simple, we're always going to shoot at 4K. Now there are varying frame rates, so I'm going to walk through which one you should use in which scenario and which one I personally use. So if you know you're going to be slowing down the footage, like 100% you know that you want this video to be in in slow motion go ahead and film in 60 frames per second that should be the only time you're filming in 60. if you're filming for social media and you want the most natural looking video that you're accustomed to then go ahead and film in 30 frames per second this is the standard for most social media apps and will give you the least amount of compression or jittering once you upload your video now if you want your video to look super cinematic or you want to film in the appropriate cinematic frame rate then go ahead and use 24 or frames per second. That's pretty much the standard when it comes to cinematic video. Now, for what I personally do, I actually film all of my drone footage in 30 frames per second. And then when I go into post processing, I edit on a 24 frames per second timeline. So I'll take my 30 frames per second video, drop it into my 24 frames per second timeline, and then I'll readjust the speed or the speed ramping so it matches my 24 frames per second timeline, meaning that I'll slow down the video footage to around 80% and that'll still give me that cinematic 24 frames per second feel but I'll have filmed my video in 30 frames per second ensuring the maximum amount of quality when filming on a drone like this so the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So that's what I personally do you're free to pick whatever frame rate you want based on whatever scenario you're in but I usually film in 30 frames per second. Now let's move on to shutter speed. Now generally you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. Now just keep in mind this rule really only applies if you're flying really close to your subject or really close to your ground. If you're flying really high up, there's gonna be pretty much no motion blur in your video, so the shutter speed really doesn't matter. But in most cases, I like to keep my shutter speed double my frame rate just to make sure that everything stays consistent. And just in case there is some motion blur, my video looks as cinematic and as accurate as possible. So if you're filming your video at 24 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be at around 1 50th of a second. If you're filming at 30 frames per second, you want it to be at around 1 60th of a second and finally if you're filming at 60 frames per second you want it to be around 1 over 120th of a second. Now if you set your shutter speed according to this rule and your video is totally washed out meaning it's super bright everything looks really white you're going to need something called ND filters. Now Polar Pro makes excellent ND filters and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Polar Pro ambassador I truly believe this I only back the products that I truly truly believe in so Polar Pro Pro makes two versions of these ND filters for the DJI Mini 3 Pro. You have the Vivid Collection, which is just an ND filter. And then you also have a collection which has a circular polarizer or a polarizing effect in it. This is the one that I recommend because it helps eliminate all the 
that harsh glare and brightness when you're flying and it just really gives your video that overall pleasing cinematic look. Now on the flip side, if you do this and your image is completely dark, then go ahead and flip your ISO up to 800 to take advantage of that native dual ISO on the DJI Mini 3 Pro like we spoke about earlier. Now when it comes to aperture, it's locked at f1.7 so you can't really do much about that but for your white balance you don't want to leave it on automatic because all the environment around you is going to be shifting when you're flying your drone and you don't want any significant color changes to take place while that's happening so for most of the time if you're generally flying outdoors you can go ahead and change your white balance to around 6000 kelvin i feel like that's worked pretty well for me in most of my videos now obviously based on your conditions you can go ahead and tweak this a little bit just to make sure that the color that you're seeing is the most accurate for your actual scene. Now let's move on to filming profiles. You've got normal and you've got decent alike on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now it's important for you to note that 10-bit color is only accessible if you use decent alike. So obviously that means you're going to need to know how to color grade. But just in case you're interested in having the best quality and the best image possible, you have to film in decent alike to make use of that 10-bit color and this will allow for extreme flexibility whenever you're editing in post and give you the best colors and the best output possible. Next up, we have some settings for sharpness and noise reduction. Now, this is a feature that was added later on to DJI Mini 3 Pro, and I think it's a fantastic addition. It really helps this drone live up to its pro name. So what we're gonna do in these settings is we're actually gonna set the sharpness to minus two, and we're gonna set the noise reduction to minus one. This will give you the most natural looking image possible. With the default settings, you're getting a very digital looking image so something that you would see out of a smartphone like an iPhone or a s23 ultra for example it's super sharp it's super digital and we don't want that in our footage so just go ahead and set your sharpness to minus two and noise reduction to minus one to give you the most natural looking image we can always add back in sharpness later on if we want to but taking it out is extremely difficult and finally the last setting I would change is I would change the video format from dot mov to dot mp4 just so it's more compatible across a wider breadth of platforms and editing software. And that's it. Those are all of my settings to get the most professional and cinematic footage possible out of the DJI Mini 3 Pro. If you guys want to see more videos like this where I talk about how to set up your cameras, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. That's it for this video though. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.